So um, this last week we uh, had our week of prayer, and uh, I really felt like I wanted to kind of wrap up this week with the idea of what is prayer. Um, You know, one of the biggest challenges we face in any kind of relationship is, um, is that there are challenges. How many know that in relationships there are challenges, whether it's between our, our spouses, between our kids, between co-workers, between friends, between neighbors? There are challenges. And uh, that goes without saying. I think everyone in this room knows that there are challenges that impact our relationships. Uh, how many would say that, uh, that this is the biggest challenge in, in relationships? Plays in it, right? Is it the biggest? Probably not. Um, it can be a problem for people, but it's probably not the biggest issue in relationships. Uh, how many know that it's not interest, it's not the things that we're interested in that create problems in our, in our it may create challenges, but it's not the biggest issue in relationships. Is that fair to say? What about this? Does our family create problems in our relationships? Probably, uh, you know, between spouses, I I can guarantee family affects their relationship. Uh, Whether it's their own kids, whether it's their parents, whether it's their siblings, family will affect your relationship, but it is not the biggest thing that affects relationships. Is that fair to say? How about this one? Is it our past? Does, it, does our past sometimes affect our relationships? Absolutely. If you've had a bad relationship and you go into a good relationship, you may not think it's good or you may see things that are in that good relationship that aren't really there because of your bad relationship. But this is not the biggest cause of problems in a relationship. The number one cause of all relationship issues fall under this category. Number one, the 90% or 99% of all problems in relationships have to do with the fact that we're not communicating very well to each other. And, and, it, and it, in regards to money, in regards to our past, in regards to our, 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 our interest, in regards to, to all of the other things that impact our relationship, usually it's because we do not communicate very well with each other, and that's the reason our relationship struggles. It's just fair. You know, whether it's a coworker, whether it's your, your sibling, whether it's your parents, whether it's your, your children, the, the biggest challenge in, in relationships is communication. And, and, you know, I think sometimes we, we forget that communication is absolutely important. The longer you're together, the less communicating you do. It's true. All of you that have been married for more than 10 years, is that true? Jesse and Kayla, you don't know yet. You're too young. You haven't been married long enough to appreciate but the longer you are, are married, the longer you are together, the, the less communication happens because there are other ways of communicating that happen without even talking. And what happens sometimes is we stop communicating with each other, and that's when problems start. And, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how great you are, it doesn't matter if you're a really good talker, We all struggle in this area of communication, and we wonder why our relationship with God is any different. If we struggle to talk to each other who we can see face to face, how much harder is it in our relationship with the Lord and communicating with Him? And, uh, you know, I, I, I got thinking about, well, what are the ways, what are some of the ways that we can communicate with each other? What are some of the ways? Come on. Verbal, okay. Written, touch, nonverbal. How many know that nonverbal sometimes can be dangerous? Uh, they, they got me angry, so I'm not talking to them. Well, texting, phone calls. So I, I, I got thinking about this, and I thought, you know, 200 years ago, 
maybe, well, maybe a little bit longer, maybe 300 years ago. 300 years ago, the only way you could communicate was either in person with each other, or you would have to write it down and give it to somebody to take to that other person because they didn't have telephones, they didn't have computers, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have, they didn't have mail. I mean, I don't know when the mail service started, but I'll tell you this, uh, prior to mail service, people had to communicate in person with each other. They didn't live as far apart. And uh, if they communicated with each other over a long distance, it would require somebody to take that letter to them, or it would require them to travel, one of the two. Now, over the course of time, man has created telephones and internet and, and, and letters and, and mail service. You know, for, for mail, communicating through mail has only been around a, a few hundred years. Can you imagine the, the revolution that that changed in relationships and, and, and getting communicating to somebody else when the mail service started? And then think when the telephone was invented. I mean, people didn't probably didn't even know what to do with it. Like, I mean, you could talk to somebody down the street? Pastor Steve and I were talking about the cables that are in the ocean. There are cables that are run from North America to Europe in the ocean. Huge cables that are, have been put in the ocean to, to connect the two continents. Happened years ago. And they've had to replace them. Originally, they were just telephone cables. But now they're high-speed internet cables that travel across the ocean. And the cost and the, and the time that was put in to do that. You see, when we think about communication in our day, I mean, we, we can think of all these things, right? We can, we can think about, you know, talking face to face. Gee, that's probably the hardest thing for people to do today. <laughs> Folks, one of the reasons we have problems in our relationships and communicating is because we don't do enough of that. Then, of course, there's obviously letters. Now, when Kirsten and I were dating, there was no such thing as the internet. Well, it was on its, on its birth, birth stages. It was just starting. We didn't have email. I mean, the internet was something that you found at the library if you were lucky, and it was only used for hardly anything. I mean, but we had to write letters. We had to make phone calls. Yeah, isn't that a great picture? Then, of course, there was texting has come in and emails, right? Those two things have kind of, email started and texting kind of joined into that. How many of you have a phone in your pocket today? Pretty much everybody, other than maybe some of the kids. How many of you have texted somebody today? It's okay. You're allowed to text people. Don't, don't feel bad that you've texted somebody. So, so, you know, we've moved, right? We've progressed in how we communicate. The problem is, is that some of these ways of communicating aren't really healthy. How many of you know, have you ever texted somebody or sent them an email and they misunderstood what you were saying? They took it totally wrong because they thought you were upset with them and you weren't. They just, yeah. It happens, folks. And then, of course, uh, you know, for businesses, there are conference calls and, and video calls. And, and, you know, the one that we've all come common to, you know, as part of that video call called Zoom. Right? I mean, th there's all these things that, that are giving us the ability to communicate. And yet, with all of this technology, with all of this ability, we still struggle in communicating with one another. I mean... Can you imagine if we got rid of it all and we were told that you had to go back to face-to-face -to -face conversations? It might. It probably would. Because I'll tell you this, you're, it's pretty hard to, to stand and tell somebody something and them not understand how, you're, how you mean it, right? Because you're right there face-to-face. -face. How many know that you can still communicate poorly? Have you ever met somebody who communicates poorly? It's probably me. It's okay. I get it. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we communicate poorly. 
So when we talk about prayer, have we really thought about what prayer is? I mean, think about this. We did not have to pray before sin entered the world. You may say, well, what do you mean? We didn't need to pray. Adam and Eve walked in the garden with God face to face. They had a relationship with God. It was a face-to-face thing. They walked in the garden with him. And it tells us this in Genesis chapter 2. It says this. It says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden, but the Lord called to them, Where are you? Now, folks, think about this. Prior to sin, God's relationship with mankind was on a, on a face-to-face basis. It was on an a intimate relationship, present day, in, you know, be, in, the, in the garden together. And we see what happens. Sin comes, and guess what? All of a sudden, mankind is hiding from God. Man is hiding. You know, we, we find a couple other accounts of, of, this, of this idea that, that God was meeting face to face. Uh, in Genesis chapter 32, Jacob. In Jack, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 20, Jacob says this. So Jacob called the place Penal, saying it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. He was was encountering God face to face. He, He was having this experience face to face. Again, we find in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, Moses, it says that the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses was in the presence of God and spoke to God face to face. How many of you have ever experienced God face to face? Good. I'm glad none of you put up your hand. Because you probably would be lying. And yet we see this in Scripture. We see Adam and Eve. We see Moses. We see, we see Jacob where they had these encounters face to face. Joshua, the son of Nun, was there in the tent with God, with God and Moses. Joshua encountered God face to face. He was in his presence. And, and you know, without prayer, we have no way to communicate to God. It's not like we can text God. Hey, uh, Father. You know? Father, I'm really messed up today. We don't, we can't text him. We can't, we can't email him. You see, we know that, that prayers are one, our way to communicate with Him, and yet sometimes we struggle to do that. Numbers in Deuteronomy tell us that, that God even said, I spoke to my friend Moses face to face. So God is even saying, hey, I, I, I encountered Moses face to face, but for you, you need to seek me. I mean, without prayer, how, do we, how are we ever going to communicate to God? How many know that God communicates to us in a lot of different ways? Right? God communicates through his word. God communicates through the actual creation he's created. He communicates his greatness. He communicates his, his ability to create just by looking around. Just look around someday, folks. How can you look at a tree or, or, the, or the lake or the water and go, there is no God? I don't know how the people do that. The diversity and the creativity and the uniqueness of, of everything. You know, we got a whole bunch of dogs in our neighborhood. 
a whole bunch on our street. I think everybody on the street has a dog, or pretty close. And they all seem to show up in our yard. And not one of them is the same as the other. Like, we got two, two labs next door. One's chocolate, one's yellow. We got two labs in our house. One's black, and the other one's part shepherd, so she's kind of black and, and brown. There's a husky up the street. When he shows up, he's fully husky. And if you go out and talk to him, he'll talk back to you. It's quite funny. It's, it's quite comical, actually. There's such diversity. How can we look at nature and creation and not see the Creator? So God communicates Himself to us in many ways, and yet we have one way to communicate to Him. That's through prayer. You know, we were reminded this week, we were reminded this week that uh, prayer is a, is a privilege. Think about this. Can you imagine trying to have a relationship and have no way to communicate with that person? I always, I always think it's funny, you know, uh, and, and this may be true for you, hopefully it's not, but, but definitely for a younger generation, uh, they have lots of friends. At least that's what their Facebook page says. I'm always amazed. When, you know, I, I, I've had kids tell me, oh, I got like 600 friends. And I said, how many of you have actually met? Uh, yeah, 10, 15. So how do you know they're your friend? How do you even know you're talking to that person? How do you know? Well, you know, why would they lie to me? Folks, the Internet is full of scammers and problems and but this week when we were having prayer we were reminded that uh, it's not that we have to pray it is that we get to pray if we see prayer as a thing that we have to do and not something that we get to do guess what we are not going to make it a priority we're not. If, if, we, if we recognize prayer as this obligation instead of this relationship, then we've got a problem. Because we're never going to make it a priority in our life, and we're never going to actually do it consistently. So if communicating with God is the purpose of prayer, why is it so hard sometimes to do it? Now, I want you to think about that because there's lots of reasons, same reason, some of the same reasons we have with communicating with each other. You know, why do we avoid conversations with each other? Because it's difficult. We don't want to get into it. We don't want to deal with that thing. We don't, we don't want somebody to push our buttons. We don't want somebody to disagree with us, so we just don't talk. And guess what? We do the same thing with God. We don't talk to Him because we know the issues in our life. We know the sin we've done. We know, we know the, the struggles we face. We know the challenges we have. And so we don't talk to Him. And folks, let me tell you something. God already knows. You don't need to tell Him. He already knows your sin. He already knows your screw-ups. He already knows how messed up you are. He knows how good you are. He knows what you've done. He knows it all. And so for us to avoid Him is silly because He already knows. And yet we do. We avoid that communication with him. When we pray, what are some of the things that we pray about? Now, I want you to think about it, but when, when you actually get down and pray and seek the Lord, what are the things you pray about? Is your prayer life caught up in asking God for stuff? 
Can you imagine if the only time you talked to your spouse was when you wanted something? Now, we all struggle with communication, right? So it's not something that... But, but can you imagine if the only time you talked to somebody else was when you wanted something from them? How long do you think that relationship would last? Can you, let me ask you this. Have you ever had somebody who wanted to be your friend, but the only thing they ever wanted to do was ask you to help them with something? They never actually came and actually talked to you about life. They just wanted you to give them something or do something for them. You ever met people like that? Folks, we're like that with God. We go to God when we, when we, you know, when we have a prayer request, and our prayer request is usually, you know, God, I'm struggling in this, this thing. I need, I need this. Can you, can you heal me because I'm tired? Or whatever. We're, we're always seeking God for what we can get as opposed to having a relationship with him. When was the last time you prayed and said, hey, God, I just wanted to say hi because I missed you? Now, I know that sounds silly, but you know what? I think the Father would appreciate that. When we pray, what is it we're communicating to God? Is it just our wants and our, and our needs, or are we actually having a relationship where we're saying, hey, God, you know, thank you for doing that. Lord, thank you for the, the beautiful sky you put up today. Lord, thank you for the sunshine. You know, it, it's interesting when Jesus, you know, when Jesus was asked by his disciples uh, to teach them to pray, it's found in two places. It's found in Matthew and it's found in Luke, but today we're going to look at it from Matthew chapter 6. I think it's quite interesting what he says. Because how many know the Lord's Prayer? Okay. So we'll see how well you know it in a minute. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it says this. Jesus was asked, right, by, by the disciples, teach us to pray. He had just finished praying. And so they said, teach us to pray, Lord. Teach us, you know, Master, teach us how to pray. And this is what he said. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrite, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogue or on the street corner to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is what Jesus says to the disciples, right? This is, this is his word to them. He's like, he's like yeah, this is what, we're, this is, this is what you, know, you need to do. You need to not be a hypocrite and stand up in the synagogue and pray out loud so that everybody can see you. Now, it doesn't say that we shouldn't pray out loud. It doesn't say that we... What he's trying to do is help his disciples understand, don't be like that. Don't be the hypocrite just so that people can see you and don't be like the pagans who just keep repeating the same thing over in hopes that God will hear them. God already knows what you ha need. Even before you ask, he tells his disciples. He gives them the instructions, right? He tells them this. And then he, he gives them the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm going to put it on the screen, but I'm going to put it on the screen after we say it together. Because I want to see how accurate we are. Okay. So then he says this to them, this is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. That's interesting. Do you know that's not in Scripture? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Do you know it's not found in Scripture? Man has added that to the Lord's Prayer because man wanted to have the prayer seem like it was finished. 
Oh, we're finished. Let's finish it. Well, thine is the power of the glory forever and ever. We've, we've, we've taught ourselves that that's how you finish the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, I did set you up. It was deliberate. I think, I think sometimes we're ready to ask God for things but not deal with our own growth. So, so look at what it says. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty clear, right? It talks about Him and His kingdom. It talks about us worshiping Him. Now, we, we did a Bible study this last year called uh, The Prayer Course. And, and it, it took this passage of Scripture and talked about the Lord's Prayer and, and just how we should pray. And, 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 you know, but when you think about this, the, the initial part of this prayer is, Our Father in heaven, call out unto Him. Right? And, and, and hallowed be your name. Glory to your name. You, O Lord. You know, this is usually how we pray. Uh, Father, uh, would you help this, this situation? Would you do this? Would you do that? Would you do... Would you take some time and just worship him? Right? It, 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 you want a better relationship with God, well then spend time worshiping him. He wants to meet with you. Just like he met with Adam in the garden, maybe not face to face, but he still desires to have, have that relationship. He still desires to meet with you. And a lot of times we're so fearful to meet with him because we are dealing with sin in our life that we don't want to talk to him. But what do you want? Folks, he knows already. And then of course, you know, give us, give us today our daily bread. Now, God knows what you need. He knows the words to give you. He knows the, the food to give you, to sustain you. You know, how many talk about God giving, do we talk about scripture with God? Do we, do we, when, we when we read scripture, do we say, God, what do you mean here? Like, help me, God. I, you know what? Sometimes we don't. What we do is we read it and go, oh, that was good. Now I've done my job, so let's go on. Let's get into his word. Do you know, I don't see anywhere in here except for give us today our daily bread that Jesus told them to ask God for things. Do you know, nowhere in there do we say, oh, God, would you give me a raise? God, I, I, can you give me a Cadillac today? It's, it, it talks about our spiritual food being fed, and then it says, oh, by the way, you need to forgive our debts. Forgive, our, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sin. Forgive us for what we've done, right? Forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I, I, I think that verse should actually read this way. Lead us not into temptation, because we can find it all on our own. The sad part is we can all find temptation in something. And you know, we, we, we think about that, and we, we finish it off with, thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. That's not how Jesus finishes it off. This is how he finishes it off. He finishes off the Lord's Prayer with this. And, and I don't know about you, but, but I think this is kind of, you know, crucial. For if you forgive other people... When they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive yours. That's how Jesus finishes off the Lord's Prayer. Now in Matthew, he finishes it this way. In Luke, he finishes it another way. In both cases, there's nothing in there about thy power and thy glory and thy forever and ever. Amen. That mankind has added in both times, Jesus, Jesus is talking to them not only about praying, but also about forgiving. One of the biggest struggles we face in, in relationship is that we don't forgive each other. We get upset, and instead of forgiving each other, we just hold that grudge, and we, we kind of go, oh, rah, 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 rah. And, and folks, 
It's not just the world. It's not just sinners that do that. We all do that. We all struggle sometimes. Whether it's to forgive or, or to, to actually play nice with each other. You see, I think it's interesting that in this passage where Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, the biggest issue in there is about forgiveness. It's not about all the stuff God's going to do for you. It's about forgiving and letting God forgive you if you would forgive others. Jesus, over and over in this passage, says forgive, right? Forgive our debtors. Forgive those who have sinned against us. And if you don't, guess what? God isn't going to forgive you. That's what, that's what the scripture says. Now, if we would really take that to heart, it might change how we treat other people. All of us. Do we, do we really forgive? Now, you know, Paul goes on and gives lots of instruction about prayer. I mean, we see it in, in, in Romans. He says, never be lacking in zeal. <clears throat> but keep your, your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction faithful in prayer. I don't want a show of hands, but ask yourself, have you been faithful in prayer? I'm sure that most of us could say that we probably haven't been in time, at times. I'm sure every one of us could say that we haven't been faithful in prayer at some point in our life after we got saved. Because we're human and we, we mess up and we, we're, we're sometimes not faithful because we get busy and we, we don't make it a priority and In Philippians, Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to, the, to, to God. When we present our request, are we thankful? Or are we just presenting our request to God? Or are we thankful for what God's done? Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for pulling me out of a pit. Thank you for putting me on solid ground. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing. And, and Lord, I, I'm still messing up. Help me, Lord. Most times we don't do that. And yet that's what he wants us to do. That's what he wants us to do. You see, he tells the, the Corinthian church, or the, the Philippi church, to be thankful with thanksgiving. Are you thankful today? You don't have to wait till October to be thankful. Sometimes I think we act that way, right? We act that way. We, oh yes, it's Thanksgiving, let's be thankful. But folks, we should be thankful every day. His mercies are new every morning. New every morning. If you've had a bad day, Go to sleep, get up, and thank the Lord for the new mercies he's given you that day. Because we've all had bad days. Ephesians. Paul tells the Ephesian church, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this, in, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Now I want to ask you this, this simple question. Have you prayed for somebody that is God's people that God would just encourage them and bless them today? Now I asked you at the beginning of the service, or at the beginning of this message, how many of you text somebody today? If you got your phone, pull it out. If you got a phone, pull it out. See, I even got a text a half an hour ago. How many of you have gotten a text while you've been sitting in church? 
Oh, you turned it off. Good, good. So here's what I'd like you to do. Now you're all like, oh, got to check my messages. That's not why I asked you to pull out your phone. But I want to ask you this question. Is there somebody in your phone, somebody's contact in your phone? Is there someone that you have that's a contact on your phone that needs to be encouraged today? Is there somebody on your phone who needs to be prayed for today? You see, we're so busy texting each other and looking at our emails and checking what's new online and, and, and looking at our Facebook pages. We're so busy doing all those things that sometimes we forget that God's called us to keep praying for all God's people. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And this is a one-time ask. I'm not going to ask you to do this every Sunday, and, I'm, and hopefully you don't do this every Sunday. But here's what I would like you to do is choose one of those contacts right now and I want you to send them a text. And here's what I want you to text them. My pastor just asked us to pray for you. My pastor just asked that we would pray for one of our friends and so I chose you to pray for them. Something like that. And I am praying for you right now. And when you're done sending that text... We're all going to pray for that person that we sent the text to. And we're going to pray for God's blessing on their life. We're going to pray for God's wisdom in their life. We're going to pray that God would just bless them and encourage them today. Okay? So go ahead, text somebody. Once you've all done that, say amen. Okay. Have you done that? You all done? Everybody done? If 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 you're not done, you just stick your hand up. Okay. Almost. Okay, and here's what I'd like us to do. Let's lift up our voice to the Lord. Let's pray for that individual. Let's pray that God would bless them, that God would do something in their lives. Okay? I'm just going to ask you to do that. So let's, let's just pray for a couple minutes, and then, then we're going to finish up the service. But I really felt led by the Lord that we should do this today. I was, I, I, I asked Kirsten if I was nuts, because I, you know, I, I trust my wife. So when I asked her, you know, I was thinking about doing this, what do you think? She was like, yeah. Uh, she was kind of encouraging. <laughs> so if you think I've, I'm, I'm weird, it's okay. I am. But here's the thing. I think sometimes we spend so much time on these devices and because of it, we don't spend much time this way. So let's pray for that individual, okay? Would you lift up your voice to the Lord? And we're going to pray and, uh, and then we're going to look at a few other things and then we'll be done. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Father, we just lift up every name, oh God, that's been texted today. Every person that's been texted. Every person, oh God, that we're praying for. Lord, we lift them up to you, oh God. Lord, we pray for a, a move of your spirit in their life, oh God, that they would just experience your presence, oh God. That, Lord, that they would be blessed, oh God, today, that somebody's praying for them, that somebody cares, oh God. That, Lord, that they would experience your presence, oh God, today, wherever they are. Lord, if they're in church, praise God. If they're at home, praise God. That, Lord, that they, you, that they would hear from you, oh God, today hear from you. And Father, maybe some of them uh, don't even have a relationship with you. And Lord, we pray that they would get saved. That Lord, that they would encounter that. That they would encounter you, oh God. Lord, we thank you today, oh God, for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we, Lord, are saved and set free. So, Lord, we pray that you would move, oh God. Lord, we think of all the, the church family, oh God, that's, that's ill or feeling sick or, or, Lord, isolating because they have no choice or whatever the reason. Lord, we pray right now that you would just be with our family, oh God, today. That every one of them would even right now, Lord, as they're sitting at home, they, they would just sense your presence. Lord, bless this family, oh God. Bless our family today. Continue to give us your daily bread. Lord, that we would sense, oh God, what you're doing in our lives, oh God. Lord, may we be better at communicating with you. May we encourage ourselves to pray and to, and to seek your face. Lord, that we would seek your face, not your hands. Lord, we would seek your face and not your hands. We'd seek after you, O oh God, and not what you give us. Well, what you give us, O oh God, is the blessings that flow from a relationship with you. So, Lord, let us seek your face to face, O oh God. Let us seek after your face, O oh God. We give you praise and honor and glory, O oh God, for you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We give you praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, as a church, our desire is that we would be a place of prayer. We've, our desire is that prayer would be a priority in our family. That's why we have things like this, right? We, we, have, we have things put in place to help people, give them the opportunity to pray. That's why we have like the prayer chain. Do you know if you have a need, if, you, if there's something that you want somebody to pray for, it's a matter of calling the church and, and we'll pass that on to a few people and they'll pray for you. You don't have to walk this road alone. And it's, and it's private and it's confidential and it's, it's not like, you know, we, we put it on the, the sign out front. We have a prayer chain for that reason. That, and, and we have an emergency prayer line where you can call and, and, and you can call somebody. It's on the back of the bulletin or in the bulletin. It's there for a reason. We, we post in the bulletin prayer requests so that you can pray for somebody. Those are the ones that are not so private because they've, they've told us that it's okay to post it. But we, we get prayer requests all the time. Just so you know, your pastors and staff, when they're all here in the mornings, we pray every morning. Now, some mornings we're, we're not all here. Some mornings we don't, we're not, we don't pray because there's maybe just one of us. But we pray together. There's morning prayer, 7.30 to 8.30, and it's on Zoom for now. We pray in our services, before and during our services. We have united prayer once a month. Once a month. 
you could come to a prayer meeting once a month and gather with the family and pray. We just finished up the week of prayer. And we'll probably do a week of prayer again in January next year. Maybe we'll do one in the summer. But you know, it, it was an opportunity to just come together and pray for an hour together. We prayed for our church family. We prayed for the schools. We prayed for our kids. We prayed for the youth. We prayed for the over the week. We prayed for uh, our, our government. We prayed for our missionaries. If you don't have anything else to pray for, pray for our missionaries. They can do with it. You know, just talk to God. We've had Bible studies on prayer. And of course, there's personal prayer and, and there's corporate prayer. We, 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 we want to be a place where people pray. If there's nothing more important, there's like the two most important things in your life spiritually is praying and reading the word spiritually. Those are the two. And they go hand in hand. Because see, if we pray and we read the word, God is communicating with us and we're communicating with him. It's a two-way thing. So I'm going to ask you this question. I don't want you to answer me, but I want you to ask the question of yourself. And then I want to ask you to answer the second question. The first question is, how's your prayer life? How is it? And, and here's, here's the thing. If, if it's struggling, what are you going to do to make it better? If, if it's great, what are you going to do to make it better? Because you know what? You can never have too much of a good thing. Well, maybe you can. Eating too many Oreos will make you sick. But when it comes to prayer, you can't outdo God. When it comes to prayer, you can't pray too much. Can you imagine if you had a relationship and, and you said the reason that you you the reason the relationship failed was there was too much communication. I'm sorry, I can't have a relationship with you. There's too much communication. Now that might be true because of these things. But I don't think that's true if you're having relationship and conversation with people. I, don't, I, I find it hard to believe that there would be too much conversation or too much communication. Now, might, there might be times where you need to be still. You know, the Word tells us that we're to be still before the Lord. There are times where maybe it's just being in His presence. Just being in His presence. There's times where maybe it's a long conversation, you know. You, how many have driven to Thunder Bay by yourself? Many times. It's a great time to talk to God. Because you got four hours of uninterrupted time. Because the radio doesn't work, at least for part of it. Your cell phone will disconnect at some point. So it's a great time to spend in, in, in conversation with the Lord. You know? Maybe you have a conversation every morning in the shower with the Lord. I don't know. And you know, God's okay with that. I wouldn't be okay with it because I don't want to have a conversation while you're having a shower. But God's okay with that. God's seen you naked. He made you. It's this idea that we need to work better at communicating with our Father. We just need to contact and sp stay in contact with Him. The Word tells us to be constantly in prayer. ever heard of a woman named Cory Ten Boom? Cory Ten Boom uh, was, was uh, I think she was Jewish. I can't remember. No, she wasn't Jewish. She was, but she, she helped hide Jewish people during the Second World War in Germany. 
Corey Tim Boone lived in New York City. And uh, the, the president of our Bible college knew her personally and, and would pick her up. And he would tell this story about Corey that Corey Tim Boone was always praying. She was always praying. Always. Like, you never knew. Like, she was constantly praying. So, you know, he would pick her up and, and you know, she'd be praying. And he would say, what? And she'd say, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. And, and he would say to her, he'd say, Corey, do you, do you want to go to the deli? And she would be like, yeah, I want to go to the deli. Let's go to the deli and get some sandwiches. And, and he'd say, well, you know, it, it's really hard to find a parking spot there. Maybe I should just drop you off. And, and she's like, no. And she'd start praying for a parking spot. You see, Corey Ten Boom believed that her relationship with God was, at, at the most, uh, more important than any relationship she had with anybody else. So she would pray, you know, for a parking spot in front of the deli. And Dr. Crandall said they never went to the deli without parking in front of it. Now, that's some serious relationship with God. That he's even concerned about where she parks when she goes to the deli. You know, Corey, are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to God. We need to be that kind of people that we're talking to God. You know, if your relationship with God is, is messed up or struggling, then spend some more time talking to Him. How many of you know we all could do with a little more time with the Lord? A little bit more talking with the Father. So let's, we're going to finish today. Father, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we, we recognize our need for prayer. Lord, it's not because we have to, but we get to. We get to communicate with you. We get to, to speak to you. We get to actually have a relationship with you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Lord, I pray as we go from this place that our, our time together would not stop our communion with you that our time together as we depart and go home and we go to wherever we've got to go this afternoon and do whatever we've got to do, that, Lord, we would continue to communicate with you. Lord, that prayer would be a priority in our lives, not just an afterthought. And, Lord, that, that all the people we text, all the people we are in contact with, that we would pray for them, not just, hey, how you doing? we pray for them. And Father, that our influence would not be just a temporal influence, but it would be eternal influence. And Lord, may we just be better at being kids with you. Lord, one of the biggest struggles as humanity is communicating with our kids. Lord, I know how difficult that can be as our kids grow and they become adults and the communication sometimes is struggled and hampered. Lord, I, I pray for our kids today that you'd restore that communication with our kids. Restore those communications with our children, with our spouses, with our, with our family, oh God. We'd just be better at it. But Lord, more importantly, may our relationship with you be better. May we be better. May we communicate with you better. Father, thank you today. Thank you, O oh God. Remind us, O oh Holy Spirit, remind us when we need to talk with you. And we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, I encourage you, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Paul's word was to be continually in prayer. Be thankful. Keep going. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.